already we have learned uh, how to design the combination circuit design or uh, combina simple com combination circuits, complex combination circuits, uh, how we can synthesize the combination circuits from given Boolean equations or given a problem how we can design a combination circuits. Today, we will start discussion on sequential circuit design, particularly the synchronous sequential circuit design. Now, first we consider the design of sequential modules. What do we mean by sequential logic circuits? Now, in combination circuits, we have seen that the combination output of the circuit depends only on the inputs of the particular circuit. Now, the sequential circuits depend not only on the present inputs, but also on the past history of inputs and time. Means that the present output depends the present input as well as the previous state and that state is a time of or is a function of the inputs and time. So, that is why it is written that past history of inputs and time. Now, a memory element is attached with the combination circuit which allows the output to be feedback as input, mainly that how the sequential uh, blocks are developed. Now, <coughs> See, uh, normally this is the design of a simple sequential modules. One combination circuit is there and inputs already we have seen that these are the present inputs. Now, for combination circuit these outputs are uh, the only the function of present input, but here one memory element is attached and that it is the sum of the outputs are attached to the memory and it is then fed back to the combination circuit. So, this thing <coughs> this combination circuit attached with the memory elements which feedbacks some of the outputs is a sequential module. So, this is the basic module of a sequential circuits. <coughs> now, what do we mean by synchronous and asynchronous circuits? Now, the with the memory elements we will attach a a clock. So, whatever was there in the sequential circuits the present input is there, the outputs are there, some of the outputs attached with the memory element and they are fed back to the memory. Now, we are another input this is a clock input that is given to the memory. So, what it will be doing? See the clock pulse is used to regulate the feedback. When the clock pulse becomes high, the inputs are enabled. So, if we see the picture, so when this clock pulse, this clock pulse, say here we are giving say one clock pulse. So, when this clock pulse is high, means this is high, then only these inputs are these memory inputs are enabled to the 
combination circuit. So, this is the uh, so circuitry description, the sequential module description. <coughs> so, mainly there are two, uh, another uh, control input and that is the clock pulse is attached with the memory element. Now, these circuits with feedback, so memory elements can be created by simple gates, this is inverter, NOR gate or NAND gate. Now, mainly this is the basis for commercial static RAM designs, means the 1 bit memory element and cross coupled NOR gates, NAND gates that are also used that means inverter, NOR gate, NAND gate mainly they are the they are used to design 1 bit memory. First we see the, so the simplest design, see <coughs> we consider here one inverter. Okay. We, if we draw say first one inverter is there, we apply one one. So, what will be the output? Output will be 0. Now, another inverter is cascaded with this. So, it will be the output will be 1. Now, if it is feedback, so here I am giving 1 and that 1 I am getting here and see here the concept is as if the, the delay of 2 inverters up to this time this the sum of these delays up to this time this 1 is stored in this circuit. My input is 1, input is 1, my output is 1 and as if this is the time I am stored this 1, the time during which the 1 is stored. So, this simple concept is being used. Now, before we uh, read the in details the design of flip flops or these memory elements uh, using NOR and NAND circuit, first we define a flip flop and the latches. So, mainly the latches and the flip flop they are the basic sequential logic elements. Now, the latches and flip flops mainly the latches and flip flops they are the most important type of sequential circuit. So, flip flops are used as building blocks to construct larger sequential circuits and flip flop operates in one of two modes one is called the direct mode and another is the clocked mode. Now, first we see the definition of this uh, direct mode flip flops and the clock mode flip flops. Now, direct mode flip flops that respond directly to the applied inputs means the output changes as the whenever the input changes and the example is the we will see later that SR flip flop examples are SR flip flop and gated D flip flop. Now, the clocked mode flip flops respond when a clock transition occurs. That means, there must be one clock input in the circuit 
already we have seen that in the sequential module one clock input we can give to the memory elements. So, when a clock transition occurs from one voltage level to another that time only the output responses. So, the output respond when the clock changes, when the clock changes. Now, the examples are the T flip flop or sometimes we call the toggle flip flop, it is normally called T flip flop. Then J k and clocked D flip flop. Now, one by one we will see the different type of flip flops. Now, first we see the latches because that is one basic elements. So, for we, we consider already uh, I mentioned that the way I have a uh, one bit memory we have designed using inverter say two cascaded inverter see here two cascaded inverter and the output is fed back. If I give one intermediate 0 then it will be a 1. Now, I am taking two NOR gates. Okay. So, this is one NOR gate, this is one NOR gate. There are two inputs, one is called the R means the reset, another is set S. So, normally these are the two inputs R and S, the reset and set, reset means R, set is S. So, this is the two inputs. Now, the circuit is made that output of the first NOR gate that is being fed back as the input of the NOR gate where S is another input. Similarly, the output of the S that is being fed back to the NOR gate where R is another input. So, those this is the circuit that means two NOR gates we have taken R is one input S is input of the two NOR gates and the other inputs are actually the output of S and R or output of the two NOR gates. So, the symbol normally used is that one rectangular box, the two inputs are R and S, two outputs are Q and Q bar, Q bar. That means, Q bar is the Q bar is the complement of Q. So, the two outputs is uh, are the complements and the, these are the symbols. Now, we see the function table. See that these are my inputs of the circuits, these are the inputs. One of the output Q, this is my one of the output. Circuit I think we remember that two NOR gates are there, one R input, one S input and the output of this is fed 
similarly the output of this is z this is q this is k bar now this is the function table that when the inputs are 0 0 then it is denoted as q y output is q i plus 1 means we can write that this is the present state. Say this is my as already we have mentioned that the present output or better I write that present output is a function of the present input and the So, this is my present output and the previous step. So, this is my present output and this q i we denote that sum of the previous step that previous step. So, from where we have started after that if we give the R s inputs at 0 0 then the it will be the previous step. So, if it is 0 1 now if I give 0 1 then output is 1 if it is 1 0 it is 0 0 and if it is 1 1 then question mark means this is undetectable this is undetectable. So, now each of the input cases we see each of the cases that how the function table forms by this circuit. See first we assume that the first case that r equal to 0 and s equal to 0. So, input is fed. So, r is 0 and s is 0 this is my circuit. Now, if the earlier q value was 1 and then that if r equal to 0 what will happen? See earlier q value was 1, so 1, 1 was come here but this is 0. So, what will be the output say if we mark the first NOR gate as the N 1 or the top NOR gate is the N 1, bottom NOR gate as the N 2, then what will be the function of the or what will be the input of N 2? So, if we consider N 2 the inputs are inputs or 1 0 then the output will be because it is a NOR so output will be 0. So, that means here 1 0 will come. So, for N 1 for N 1 the inputs are 0 0 output is 1. So, that is why it is written as 1. Now, what will happen if q equal to 0? Say that means, if we assume that q value was a 0, if we assume that q value was a 0. Okay. Now, if my q value again if we draw the circuit, say this is my NOR gate. Okay. This is my R input, another S input, it is fed back, this is also fed back. Okay. Now, we have assumed that this Q equal to actually Q i is the previous state that equal to 0. So, for 
So, for n 2 the inputs are 0 0 0 0 output is 1. So, what will happen for n 1? This 1 will go here. So, the inputs for 1 the inputs are 0 1 because the output of n 2 is 1 and that is being fed back to the one of the input of n 1 nor get and the output will be 0 output will be 0. So, what we have seen when the previous uh, output of the circuit. So, previous output of the circuit say q y that was 1 my the previous the present output q or we can write q y plus 1 if, if previous we can denote q y then the name current 1 is the q y plus 1 that will be 1. If it is q y equal to 0 just now what we have seen then the the present output if we can denote q y plus 1 and that is 0. So, that is equal to equal to q y and this this is equal to q y. So, what we can tell that this is the we, this case we are discussing that if R s inputs are 0 0 then this is the previous that we can tell the previous state or we can tell that this is hold. That means, whatever signal level was there in the output it continues that means, it holds that value it holds the signal value. So, R s 0 0 it, it is a hold state. Now, if it is a 0 1 similarly if we see that uh, if it is a 0 1 or zero uh, zero. Okay, if it is a one zero, means the reset goes active. So, what will happen if if r equal to one? and s equal to 0, then in the similar way we are getting that q equal to 0 and the complement of q, q bar is 1. Since both inputs are 0, the output is forced to 1, the earlier situation already we have seen. Now, the output q bar is fed back to the get and both inputs being 1 to the output q stays at 0. That means, if it is 1 then if it is 1 then r equal to 1 and the other input is all, uh, also 1 that means, for n 1 for n 1 what we can tell n 1 the inputs inputs are 1 1. So, the output q is output q is equal to 0. So, that we are telling that reset as the output is 0. Now, again if we give r equal to 0 and s equal to 0, then this reset goes inactive. That means, q changed from q changed from 1 to 0. and the signals on R will have no effect.
Now set the latch. Now setting S to 1 then 0. Now if we see that okay, setting S to 1 that means uh, then 0 that means 0 1 that activating S will set Q to a one step state. When R and S are activated simultaneously, both outputs will go to a 0. When R and S now go in active 0, both inputs at both gates are 0 and both gate outputs are 1. Now, these 1 fed back to the input drives the outputs to 0 again. So, both inputs are 0 and so on and it will continue. So, what will happen? So, if we consider, okay, if we see that again if we draw the circuit, say the NOR gate, Now say both inputs are these are 1. Now if R0 and A equal to S equal to 0, now then what will happen that here also it has 1 has come, here also 1 has come. So this will become 1 1 because nor gate, so it will become 1 and this will become 0. So, and it will continue that thing. So, when R and S now go inactive 0, both inputs, when R and S now go inactive 0, both inputs at both gates are 0 and both gates output are 1, just now we have seen. Now, this one fed back to the inputs drives the outputs to 0 again, because once the uh, output of the NOR gate, one of the NOR gate becomes 1, then it will force to uh, the other NOR gate uh, output be 0, provided the other input is 0 just now we have seen that thing. So, again both inputs are 0 and so on and it continues. So, see what what we what we see that again if we consider that means say again if we draw 2 nor gate, if we draw 2 nor gate C so, this is my R input and this is my S input. Now, if it is 0, so we are considering some previous state and previous state just now we have seen if it is R, R equal to 0, S equal to 0, then this becomes 1. So, previous state is 1, my Q y was 1. Now, when this becomes 1, then 0 plus 1 this becomes 0, this is 1 and then this is again this will go 0, so this becomes 1. Now, if, if the R input and if this becomes 1, then what will happen? See that this output forces actually this is the reason because my the other input is 0, other input is 0. So, this is the reason that 
it forces the output of this N2 NOR gate to be 0. Similarly, if this output, output is 1, then it will force the N1 NOR gate output to be 0 if the R input is 0 and it will continue. So, that is mentioned here. So, this one feedback to the inputs devices the output outputs to 0. Again both inputs are 0 and so on and it continues. Now, this oscillation, so this will be oscillation continues indefinitely for a perfect circuit, but as the delays are not consistent because the even they are two NOR gates, but the delays are not so, sometimes there will be a change in the time. So, processing time of the gate that we are ca ca calling the delay. So, delays are not consistent in both the gates, so the circuit will collapse into one stable state or another and this collapse is unpredictable because we do not know that which one will happen 0 or 1. So, what we can uh, summarize that this 0 0 this means this already we have seen this is a whole state. So, 0 1 this is 1 means this is my set and 1 0 already we have seen this is my reset and actually 1 1 this is unpredictable or we call undetectable whatever. So, undetectable. So, mainly these are the four situations of the RS latch. Now, the same operation we can get using NAND gate also. See, now we are taking some the similar type of structure, we are taking that again one NAND gate, R input is there. Then this is with the inverted inputs, means my R is actually R complement. Otherwise, the same circuitry I am taking, this is an AND, this is an AND, S output, again this is Q and Q 1, only is that inputs are inverted, means R is R complement, S is S complement. And that similar type of symbols we can use only see here this bubble means here this bubble means it is inverted inverted inputs now this symbol is same that R bar and S bar, again we are taking a rectangular shaped box and Q and Q bar are the, again this bubble is the inverted means that this is also inverted. So, this is actually inverted output. Now, the R is uh, here the input will be the same that this is my inputs. So, it will be as it is inverted. So, actually R bar S bar 0 R S 0 0 means this is actually the situation of 1 1 of our NOR case and 1 1 means this is unpredictable. Similarly, it is 0 1 means actually 1 0 and that is my 
reset case. It is 1 0 means 0 1. So, actually this is my set case and 1 1 means this is my 0 0. So, this is my the hold case. So, actually only we are getting that as if the inverted inputs. So, the nor cross coupled NAND gate or the cross coupled NOR gate both forms the same type of latch circuitry. Now, we take the clocked SR latch because already we have seen the uh, sequential module when the basic sequential module we have discussed what we have seen that actually this is a combinational circuits say combinational circuits C L combinational logic from inputs are there outputs are taken some memory elements this is the memory elements whose design we are discussing now and it is fed back one clock is the another input of the memory and when the clock becomes so this is one clock pass when the clock becomes high then only the inputs are enabled so these are these are enabled so mainly we are discussing this one Now, adding a control or clock input to the latch inputs, the latch can be disabled or enabled. So, now we are seeing the same NAND gate or, or say one AND gate as if this is a gated thing. Okay, first, we see the clock tessel latch. So, this is one R is fed to one AND gate and one clock is, so this is my clock input and that is the input of both the gates the output of this gated input is fed to the NOR gate of the RS latch output is Q bar and the similarly we have taken. See that means here when the clock is on or the clock is high then only the R input is enabled or because as it is the AND gate. So, what we know that say it is a R and this is my clock. So, when clock is 1 then only I will get R here because my AND truth table is 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1. So, if we see these two situation as if this is the R input and this is my clock input. So, when the clock is 1, when these two clocks are 1 or this in this case that means the if we if we draw say as this is a nothing but and so r and the clock these are the two inputs so the gated output we can tell that is 0 0 0 only 1. Now, we 
consider only this situation and this situation when the clock is clock is high. Then this is 0, this is also 0 means r, this is 1, this is 1 that is means r. So, actually when the clock is high, then the clock is high, then output equal to r, output means my gated output. So, that is why it is called a gated. Okay. Now, similar thing will happen for the S inputs also that means, that means that uh, here also that S will come here. So, this will be the situation. Now, when c equal to 0, r and s inputs cannot reach the latch. Just now we have seen because it is a AND gate. So, if c equal to 0, if c equal to 0, then both inputs are this is 0. Because AND gate if any one of the input is 0, the output will be 0. So, if clock is my clock is 0, if my clock is 0, then it will be 0. So, now we know if r equal to 0, s equal to 0, this is my hold case, means hold its previous value, already we have seen. So, when it holds its stored value, this is the hold its stored value. So, that means when my clock is 0, now now see we are trying to uh, define the memory of function or the function of the memo, um, circuit as a memory with respect to the clock. That means when my clock is 0, the whatever value was there in the uh, previous case that is being hold. So, this is the, the clock equal to 0 means R input and S input both are 0 and already we have seen for the R S latch that this is r equal to 0, s equal to 0 means the q value is the actually the previous case the q i we have denoted. So, this is my this is my q i the previous case hold. Now, when c equal to 1 that means our clock is now my clock is high. Okay. So, if we see my clock is 1. So, what we have seen actually here not 0 r and s will come into come as input because we already we have seen if clock is 1 then this is my whatever value we have given in r and s. Then if clock is 1 then whatever r value and s value means this becomes actually when clock is 1, this is behave as a whole circuit will behave as a R s latch, whole circuit will behave as a R s latch. So, it is the function as before, this is the functions as before. Okay. So, now if we uh, represent the functional logic of the clocked SR latch, then it becomes first this is my symbol of the clocked. So, there are three inputs now, one is R input, one is S input and one is my clock, C means the clock. Then again that one rectangular box and outputs are as usual q and q bar. Now, if we draw the truth table, then these are my inputs and 
one output we are showing other is the complement. So, if r is if clock is 0 see this is the situation when clock is 0. So, whatever clock is 0 whatever value in the R s we give that will not reach in the R s uh, uh, output or we can tell that R s latch input of the R s latch. So, it will be it will be the hold case means the previous state. Now, if the clock is high, so for these four cases these four cases see the clock is clock is high and if the clock is high or clock is 1 then whatever r s value we give that will reach as the input to the r s latch so it will behave as the it will behave as the simple r s latch only clocked because only it will be enabled when clock is high. So, it will be the same situation hold, set, reset and unused or undetectable or unpredictable already we mentioned. So, this is my simple R s latch only this is a clocked R s latch better I write that R s latch clocked. So, only we are getting one extra cases actually 4 extra cases that when clock is 0 that whatever R s value we give 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 then it will be all, all the cases it will be the hold case means whatever previous value was there that will be hold in the uh, output. Now, clocked D latch see the simplest clock latch of practical importance is the clocked D latch. So, it is again defined like first we see the circuit. So, as if say this is my it is defined now a D input it is one of the input of the AND gate. So, this is the S NOR gate. Now, this D input is uh, fed through a inverter. Now, what is the practical meaning of this thing? See that as if this is my another input of the R s latch. So, both active one inputs and R and S cannot occur that means, see this is if we consider this circuit this is nothing, but the clocked R S latch this is the clocked R S latch. Now, the inputs are manipulated. Now, this S, R, S and R input these are symmetrical. So, as if one D input we are now telling this is a one input that is fed and this D input being inverted is taken as the R. So, what will happen when d is 1 when d is 1 that means my s is 1 and s is 1 as it is inverted so r is 0. So, this is one case one case when when d is 0 when d is 0 then s is 1 and s, s is 0 and r is 1 
this is my second case. See that means never it will have happen because one input is inverted of the other input. So, both will be active one that that type of situation will never happen. So, this is R and S cannot occur. So, when D is 1 what will happen? When D is 1 the situation is when D is 1 actually this is the S equal to 1 and R equal to 0 and we know that 0 1 that means R S if we consider R S latch clocked R S latch this is 0 1 means this is 1 that is my set case output R this is set case. So, D is 1 when D is 1 my output Q is 1. So, now we will consider as if so D latch as if I have only one input. Now, if we draw that thing say as if I have if we if, if this becomes the symbol if this becomes the symbol as if I have the only D input clock is there obviously, because the it is clocked latch and similarly Q and Q bar this is my flip flop D flip flop or, or, or better latch also we can tell better I write I will write now I write clock D latch. So, thing is when d equal to 1 this is the q equal to 1. So, it removes the undefined behavior of the SR latch because SR latch when s equal to 1 r equal to 1 that was the only uh, confusing situation that s equal to 1 r equal to 1 the output cannot be defined or we have mentioned that is unpredictable or undetectable. Now, we have removed that cases by inverting one input of the others. That means, if one input is 1 the other input never be 1 it becomes 0. So, it removes the undefined behavior and that is the beauty of the uh, D latch. So, this undefined behavior of the SR latch and this is used as a basic memory element for the short term storage. So, symbols are often labeled data and enable clock D and C. So, now as it is the function of only one input, so as if we are we are considering that my D means this is my D input. So, this D means my data input that data which I want to store in the memory which I want to store want to store in the memory and this is being inverted this is my clock again that same symbol I can tell Q and Q bar and so this is D and clock already I have shown these symbols and this is my q q bar. So, the function table will be that if these are my inputs, inputs will be only one data input d and this is my clock and this is the output, this is the output. So, if clock is 0 already we have seen if clock is 0 the input cannot be reached. So, whatever d value is there 0 or 1, whatever d value is there 0 or 1 that it should be a hold case because my R s inputs will be 0 0. Because if clock is 0 already we have seen that it is 0 0. So, it is a hold case. Now, if clock is 1, clock is 1 then whatever d value is there that will be my input of the s input. So, 
b is 0 means s is 0, s is 0 means r is 1. So, r s is r s is 1 0 and that is my reset. So, that is why when d equal to 0, this is a reset. If d equal to 1, d equal to 1 means my s equal to 1 and s equal to 1 means my r equal to 0. So, 0 1 means R s input 0 1 means this is a set case. So, this is a set that means when d equal to 1 this is a set. So, what we can tell that d equal to 1 means q equal to 1 d equal to 0 q equal to 0. So, see the functions also function becomes very simple that means if d equal to 1 output q equal to 1 if d equal to 0 q equal to 0. So, this is the this is treated as the basic uh, memory element and that is why this is the most important uh, sequential element that is taken as the uh, basic building block for the um, higher memory design or the high dimension memory design. Okay. So, uh, next year we will be discussing the other flip flops and latches and the uh, differences between the latch and flip flop and then how it is being used for the higher dimension memories uh, etcetera. So, mainly today's club class we summarize that we have uh, what do we mean by um, uh, the latch or the flip flop and how it is being used to store one bit that we have told. So, we will end the uh, class here. Thank you. Uh, we have learned how to um, design a sequential modules or actually what do we mean by sequential circuits and how we can store one bit uh, memory or how the sequential modules are used as the memory. Then uh, um, we have seen the construction or the design of the SR latch, the clocked latch, the deep flip flop uh, etcetera. Now, today we will continue the discussion on the sequential modules the other different type of sequential uh, modules that are being used in real life circuits. But before that uh, we will see that what do we mean by the propagation delay setup time hold time and actually how these times are uh, affecting the actual value.